You said that you got you got shot with an assault rifle, and I actually read on some interview you were talking about that. What, can you tell me what happened there? Oh yeah, I mean, um, I had my, I was living in the Bronx, like around Kingsbridge, and um, these, um, I was me and this kid were living together. Um, he had a room, and I had a room on on this floor, and he had some problems with some kids. Some some graffiti dude, some local kids, and he fucking cut the kid with a hatchet. Your your boy cut him with a hatchet. Yeah, this kid this kid hurt. He cut him with a hatchet, and um, I was like, this is not good. I'm like, this is not good because they're gonna come back and they know what we, you know, they know what we wrestling. So I call one of my, one of my friends in Manhattan. And I'm like, yo, I need to hold something. I need to hold something because she's, she, I was like, women, no matter week, she's going to turn ugly. So he's like, okay, I got you. So he sends me to some um, some projects in the, in the Lower East Side, some empty ass fucking apartment. And I was supposed to meet some dude. He gives me a fucking a duffel bag. He shows me it's a fucking a 22 assault rifle. He shows me how to assemble it. I said, okay. <laughs> He gives me a, uh, the box with the rounds, and it wasn't even the right rounds. It was like 20, little small 22 rounds. And I, I got on the train with it, disassembled, took it back to, to, to the crib. And um, it was just laying there. He knew that I had it, but we, we were on alert. We knew these, these kids were going to come. So they come one day, and they come down to fight him. And... He was going to, he went down to, to, to get a fail on them and they, they tried to jump him. He somewhat slid it away and went back upstairs and he brought back, he brought back the gun. And he started fucking, he started, he lit the whole, the whole fucking block up. Like, we started running and I feel like this hot sensation in my chest. I'm like, what the fuck, what, what's this? And I lifted my shirt, it's fucking blood. I'm like, I walked back. And he's like, yo, come upstairs, come upstairs. He's, he's like, he's panicking, you know. He's, he's like, come upstairs. I'm like, no, nigga, you shot me. He's like, stop playing, stop playing. I'm like, yo, you shot me, look. He fucking drops, he he goes to the back and, and he, he just takes off and disappears. And I'm I'm uh, I'm standing against the wall because like my, my my breathing starts getting it starts getting hard for me to breathe. And um ambulance comes. They put me in the ambulance and start fucking um, cutting off my clothes. And I had like two of my friends that they were in the ambulance with me going to the, to the hospital. And um, they were like, um, they were like, is he going to be okay? And the, the medics were like, with that entrances, it does not look, doesn't look good. Does not look very good. Because it went in through my arm and then it got, and then it did here, like right, right. And then it got stuck in my soul, but. So I was in the hospital for like um, two days, and detectives were coming. He comes, he comes to my room, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, your friend told us what happens. He gave us your keys." I was like, "I don't know what you're talking about." He's like, "Yeah, he told us we, you know, he's he's, he's sorry." I'm like, "I don't, I don't know what you're talking about." Like, well, you know, we're gonna leave you a car when you decide, you know, you want you want to talk and feel better. Yeah, because I'm you understand that, you know, you're not, you know, you just went through something. I'm like, so I had my friend just come and um bring my clothes because the gun was I was like, oh I'm all I'm wearing, like my, my prints are on that gun. Because it was me. your gun. Yes, they found it, but he shot me. Um, so I didn't say anything. And they kept they kept calling to my to my door and leaving fucking cards. And I was like, it's just time to move. And he he was on the run for like two years, and um, eventually he got caught because he was he was um he was stealing cars. He was like stealing cars. Uh, Mr. Bush was stealing cars, um, airbags. I don't know what it was. And uh, he got caught. He got got caught. And um, ended up doing two years behind that. He got he got caught. And he did two years because he shot you or because of stealing cars? No, for the gun. He got, he got whatever case he had, whatever whatever case he had it was for the cars. And then he had, he had, um, he caught up a, a gun possession card, a charge. 
But because I didn't say anything, you know, he only did that much time. I had I fucking like said, yeah, he shot me, and then you know he would have did uh, way more time. How did so, you, go I was just gonna ask, how did you feel about that whole situation? Like, uh, just I don't know, like, what did you think of it? Like, did you know? Did you think you were gonna die? Did you hate the guy after? Like, what was? No, nah, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't his fault, you know. Like, you just, you know, you, you, he. I mean, I probably would have did the same thing. <laughs> if someone tried to jump me, I'm gonna try to fucking, you know, niggas try to jump me. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go upstairs and try to like clear, clear the floor, whatever. At the moment, you, 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 the heat of the moment, but like, like um, he didn't shoot you on purpose. No, he did not. Yeah. He did not. He didn't. He didn't shoot me on purpose. And we talked about it. Like, yo, man, like, I, I appreciate what you did because you didn't talk. You know, you, you didn't say anything. Um. And you don't hold any resentment towards that? No, nah, I mean it was a mistake. It was just fucking dumb on his end, but I could have could have cost him my life, you know. Um, the dude, the dude, he he, the dude that that loaned me the gun, he was um, looking for him because like now now he he was like yo he owed me money now because he fucking got got the gun taken and he lost it. So the bullet went through your arm, through your body, into your solar plexus. Yeah, to the solar plexus. And can you explain, I guess, because uh, like what the feeling was like? You said you felt like a hot sensation, but you didn't necessarily say that you felt like intense pain. Uh, did you feel intense pain? Not intense pain. It was just like difficulty breathing. And it, it was just like I had to. It was. It was just an awkward feeling like I had to conserve. My breathing or because I didn't know that it would have been my last breath. It was just, it was just an odd feeling, you know? Like, you breathe, like your life just flashes before your eyes so fast. And you're breathing, you just like, you, it, it, you just, it, it, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't explain it. But I, I left after two days with the bullet still lodged in, in my, my chest and I had to go get it, get it cut out. Like they just numbed it, they cut it out. And I was like, can I, can I keep it? Like, no, this goes back to the police for evidence wow that's crazy so now but if it was like the long bullet that actually goes yeah it would have been done done yeah for sure yeah yeah 100 this was a segment from save kst's interview the full episode is available on our patreon members get access to our entire episode library featuring interviews from host 18 diego 127 mike iraq dessa mta xsm bat ola dual wrist wayne cod less cash four and sake Members also gain access to AZ Radio, conversations of Z and I speaking on life, mental health, society, graffiti, martial arts, and more. Members can message us anything they wish to speak on, suggestions for upcoming episodes, and general questions. Members can also opt to join our product tier. We send out products like silver mops, tote bags, sticker packs, prints, zines, and books to our members every month.